Hello, everybody. Um, this is Jeffrey Daniel here again, and um, today is the uh, 9th of May, 2020. Okay. Uh, initially, I wasn't going to come back with a video this this soon, this early, because I'd like to give it some time. I don't want to over, you know, wear out my welcome and over <laughs> overstay my welcome. But um, I just thought it would be just really highly remiss of me and irresponsible if I didn't respond at this time. Um, what I'd like to talk about today is concerning the murder of our brother Ahmad Arbery. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right because I'm just reading it basically over the news reports that I'm seeing, but it's Ahmad Arbery, okay? Um, ooh, things like this, I try not to get too emotionally invested in things like this because you, you can just get carried away and, and it, can, it can drain you. But at this point, and before this point, it's, it's, it's gone overboard. It's, it's too much, it's got to stop. It's, it's, time, it's time for this to stop. It's not about uh, protesting and marching and just making speeches and stuff. We have to mobilize action now. It's got to stop. We have to take our race off the endangered species list. We have to take our race off the game hunting list. We have to take our race off the list of we can be killed with impunity because nothing's gonna to happen to you because you're of the other persuasion racially. That's got to stop. You know, the ironic thing about all of this is, first of all, we didn't invite you into our continent in the first place. We didn't invite you. You came to our continent. Okay? Now, you came to our continent and you took us away for the benefit of your survival and your economies to be indentured servants, to work for free for you. In retrospect, we built the countries that you live in. Would you people, uh, you know what? I, I, don't, I don't want this to be racially motivated because it is based on race. This is what the whole thing is really about. But coming from me, I'm not trying to be racist in return about this. I'm reacting to the racism. And when we react to it, we're either called militant, we're called angry, we're called bitter. We're human. We're just not going to sit back and shut up. It's time for us to put things into action, you guys. It's got to stop. This brother was killed on February 23rd, and the local authorities did nothing. His murderers went away free. They're at home with their families, going on about their business as if nothing ever happened. That's going back to slavery times. That's going back to Jim Crow times. So actually, nothing's really ever changed in their minds. That they think that they can do this in today's world and just walk away like nothing's ever happened. Let me put my phones on silent, you guys. I, I, come on. Uh, for two months, it took the FBI, I read something, the GBI, never heard of that before. Whatever agency they came from, they came in and it took them two days to look at what was going on and made an arrest. In two days. After two months of it being totally just it swept under the rug. With another black man dead, life goes on. And if we say black lives matter, what do you mean black lives matter? You know, all lives matter. Yes, all lives do matter, but not all lives are being disproportionately murdered by either the law enforcement agency or now by private citizens. The guy is a former law enforcement guy. And his son, bringing his son along. Come on, son, let me teach you how to do it now. Yeah, when you, when you see the black man coming, all you got to do is just attack him and shoot him and, and abuse them and spit on them or whatever like this because we're going to get away with it. He brought his son along for the, for, for the game, for the chase, for the hunt. It's a family affair. Now that's deep. It's a family affair. Um, because of this, now we know the names 
Gregory and Travis McMichaels. Now you guys are famous. Probably not what you wanted to be famous for. And they had a guy film it so they can share it with their, um, their local Aryan race brothers and, and celebrate over what they did. It was being filmed for their enjoyment. Thank you for filming it because that film is what helped brought it to light. It brought it out into the open so we can see what you did and how you did it. You incriminated yourself. Thank you very much. Um, why I feel that I have to respond is because I saw a post by Stephanie Mills and she stepped up to the plate and she just poured her heart out. And when she mentioned her 19 year old son, I have two grandsons in California. When I saw the coach of brother Ahmad, and that's when I found out that they call him Maud. I run with Maud. And he said, I'm standing in the same place where I last saw you run. This man, grown man with dignity, broke down and cried on camera. You don't think that affected me? You don't think that ate me to the core to see a, a grown black man just express himself and tear up because of the injustice of, of a nice young man that he knew that was just murdered on the streets like a dog? White Americans, if you're not racist, then you're gonna be just like the Germans that were in Nazi Germany, where they said that you're just as guilty for being silent. And I forgot how to paraphrase that, but they say, you know, those who, who, who keep silent and sit back and watch it happen, your complacency makes you just as guilty as the perpetrators. From my travels around the world, and when I perform, and we perform mostly in Europe, around Europe and Asia and places like that, you know, then you turn around and say, well, wait a minute. How can these people be this prejudiced if they love what we do so much and they respect and love our culture so much? And I come to find out that most white people aren't prejudiced, but the system of prejudice is there. The system of racism is there. And if you're just going about your daily day life, allowing it to happen, then you're just as guilty because you're allowing it to happen too. There are a lot of whites that step up and, and, and they oppose it. They, they express their you know, dislike about this whole thing. So we can't put this on all white people. But the system of white racism is alive and well till today. Um, what is this thing about make America great again? That was Trump's campaign slogan, and that empowered all of these potentially dangerous, racist, extremist whites to join in and say, yeah, let's make America, America great again. What era in your mind was America great again? When we were enslaved? We were suffering under the Jim Crow law? when you can lynch us and cut off our groins and hang us and have a picnic? Is that the era America was great again? What, what era are you referring to? When was America great again? So you wanna go back to when? Let's make America great again as in when? Explain that to me. Now for America to even have such a slogan and what we have now is such a global economy, it's very, very, I think selfish is self-centered is is arrogant that's why I say let's make love great again we can all be great if we make love great again that's my slogan let's make love great again now if you still want to just say let's make America great again and you want to stick to that and let's make America great then you're a racist because that means we want to be great, and for us to be great, other people have to suffer. And that's what happened with slavery. Your empire, for your empire to thrive, for your empire to survive, you had to conquer other people's well-established societies and oppress them and enslave them and colonize them in order for you 
to have a decent life. What kind of thinking is that? That's the thinking of a racist. They say white supremacists. There's nothing about white supremacists. There's nothing supreme about being an ignorant racist. I call it white inferiority. White inferiorist. That's what I call it. Not white supremacist. There's nothing supreme about it. It's inferior. What makes a person feel superior? Because they have something over someone else? If you see someone driving down the street in a beautiful car, if you go, wow, man, that car is beautiful. I like that. I would like to have that. That's a bit of envy, but it, you know, it, it helps motivate you. Now, if you want to go, man, look at that damn guy in that car. Yeah, he looks stinky anyway. Yeah, yeah, that ain't. Not. Then, okay, then that's unhealthy envy. And that leads into racism. It, it means that you want something that you can't have, but you got to get it at the means of other people's suffering. For you people, and I want to get back to you Europeans who think this way, the Europeans who think this way. I know a lot of lovely Europeans that don't think this way. But for any of you who feel, if you don't like my country, then get out. If you don't like my country, then leave. I got news for you. It's not even your country. Do you think your government even cares about you? They care about their economy. They care about keeping their financial stability. That's what they care about. Because when they have a war, they will send your kids to go and die somewhere overseas. Just because someone doesn't agree with them, just because they want something someone else has, they will let your kid die. They will let your father, they will let your brother, they will let your sons get on a, a boat or a plane and they will send them somewhere to go and defend their greedy policies. That's your country. They care about you. Blacks have fought in every war. Every war. First World War, Second World War, the Vietnam War, the Iraqi War, the Middle East. We fought in every war on behalf of these governments. When has an African military launched an assault on another country? When has an African military dropped atomic bombs on another country? When has an African military dropped Nepal bombs on another country? When has an African military disposed of a sitting president, Saddam Hussein, Muammar Gaddafi, and killed them in the streets like a dog and hung them because they didn't agree with our policies? So don't, don't call us racist. I'm looking at my notes because I don't want to forget anything. I'm not just bashing white people and bashing Europeans. I need some bashing on our people too. Because what we need from now is global unity. I'm talking about black people, people of color. We need global unity from now on. When I came to Africa, when I came to stay here in Nigeria from 2000, between 2010 and 11, I had a dream in my head because I knew that Africa, sorry, Nigeria was the most populous country in Africa. It is the largest population of black people on the planet. And I had a dream that this could be a state to represent black people all over the world, wherever they are, in the diaspora, in Europe, in the islands, in the Americas, in Asia, wherever we are. And the reason why we're treated the way we are is because we're so disenfranchised and, and s broken away from each other. No, there's no one to support us. There's no one to stand for us. So if we're being abused in America, we're at the mercy of the American government. If we're being abused in Europe, we're at the mercy of the European government. If we're being abused in Asia, we're just, but you know, if, if you abuse a Chinese person in America, you got the Chinese government will step up. If you abuse a, a Japanese person in America, the Japanese government will stand up for them. Who stands up for black people? Who's standing up for Haiti? Haiti is being totally uh, abused right now. Haiti is, it, it has been being suppressed ever since they fought for their independence. Who's standing up for those people who are dying and suffering over there and starving in Haiti? Who's standing up for them? It's just an isolated island and we're watching on a news of all those poor people in Haiti. Who's standing up for them? 
Who's standing up for the people in, in the uh, camps in uh, Mali and Somalia and those places when, when there's wars going on and people are being displaced and, and, and now they're in these uh, uh, camps where, where they're uh, refugee camps and, and poor conditions, no hygiene, no fresh water, not getting food, people are dying, they're, they're ravaging diseases. Who's standing up for these people? But we watch it on the news and go, oh, those poor people. And that's all. Some people put little foundations, let's, let's raise money for this and that. And, you, you know, but, and it goes on. It, ha it hasn't stopped, nothing. It's not stopping. Black people, people of color, Africans, every African country, we need to stand together, you guys. And more so now with Africa, because now the Chinese are coming over here and they're starting to colonize you all over again. We've gotten rid of the European colonization and now the Chinese are coming to colonize you. You think they're coming here for, for goodwill and brotherhood and to shake your hand and let's sing Kumbaya around the fire? Hell no. They're coming for their own agenda. They're coming here to empower themselves. This place is going to be taken from you all over again. You're about to go through a whole new era of suffering. Why don't we stand together? We're stronger together. There's billions of us globally. Let's make a black unity and stand together and help each other and help raise each other. We'll be strong. Africa is one of the most blessed, if not the blessed continent on the planet. And it belongs to the black people. And we're not even really taking the proper control of it. We're letting the foreigners come in and just siphon and take what they want and, and, and mess up our policies and give us policies to run by and stuff. It's time for us to stand. Some of the African leaders are standing up. Some of the people are waking up. But we need to join together. And join together means what? Join together and go kill all the white people? You know what? We're humans. We're spiritual people. We're not thinking about that. We're not thinking about you guys. We're not thinking, let's join together so we can get rid of you. No, we're saying let's join together so you can stop getting rid of us. So you can stop abusing us. So you can stop mistreating us, shooting us down in the streets, taking our resources, raping our children and women. Do you guys know that the French uh, peacekeeping uh, uh, unit came into West Africa when the Ebola was out there? Come to find out that they were just raping young kids. And the authorities found out about it and tried to suppress that information. And then it got out. Coming here un under the, the hood of like the Red Qua Cross or the Blue Cross, and we're coming here to help you people. They're doing it in Haiti. They have a, a whole slew of mulatto children born by the peacekeeping units that came into Haiti to help them rebuild. That resorted to raping young women for food and for water supplies. This is what they do to us. It's got to stop. Universal law has put the world on pause right now. And we're on pause. So this is time now for us to get everything and bring it out on the table and look at it. It's because when we come out of this thing, however we come out of this virus attack, we, we need to come out of this different than the way we went in. Black people, we need to go come out of this more unified, stand together. What I'd like to do, my brother Steve Hayes in Japan, he did something that inspired me. He put a photo of himself in a jogging position and said, I run with Mod. And it's M-U-A-D, because his name is Ahmad. Everybody, let's post a picture. Hashtag, I run with Mod. And let's put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, put it on Instagram, whatever social media you use. Let's all do this. And, and I'm inviting everybody. I don't care if you're white, Asian, Latino, uh, whatever you are, Middle Eastern, everybody. Let's flood the Internet with photos of us in a jogging position and say, hashtag, I run with mod. Let's flood the Internet. Let's stand for this brother. Let's, and it's not just this brother. It's this brother all the way back to Tamir Rice, to Michael Brown, to all the people who have been just murdered on the streets unjustifiably. Everybody, let's get together and do this. Let's flood the internet with this. If you don't want to do it, if you don't think it's worth your time, okay, God bless you. But for those of you who have a minute of your time, just to put a, and stand on your left foot, that means that 
We won't allow these people to be left behind anymore. Stand on your left foot. Keep your right foot in the air because that means we're not going to come down on our right foot until we get this right, until everything is right with the world. So we're going to jog and stand on our left foot in a jogging position. Hashtag, I run with mod. Let's put that on the social media, you guys. Let's flood the social media with this, okay? Nigeria, you have a chance to be the nucleus for the black global community. We have a chance to be that. Maybe you feel, well, you know, don't put that on us. It's, it's not, I mean, you know what? Okay, if not you, somebody, Ghana. But I, I, Nigeria, you're the giant of Africa. Let's lead. Let's lead. Was I naive? Coming here with high hopes for the future because I knew the potential Nigeria has? I, w I wouldn't like to think I'm naive. I would like to think I, I, I was maybe dreaming ahead of my time. That's what I'd like to think because I still believe it can happen. With all the problems that Nigeria has, whatever, socially, politically, economically, whatever, you guys have to understand something. When you come here, they're the most hospitable people you'll ever meet in your life. That's why I'm here. Excuse me. That's why I'm here. I was endeared to them. They're beautiful people. Beautiful people. Even with the hardships, they're beautiful people. They're resilient people. Nigeria, let's step up to the plate. We have a chance to show the world who we really are, what we can really do, what we can really be. I'm putting this on you. It's, it, it, some of you guys want to come and abuse me, or who do you think you are? And, and you know, uh, go back to America, or something like that. But come on, you guys, let's stop that. Let's stop that. We know where we're from. We know where we're from before we went to America. We know where we're from. If not Nigeria, Africa. If not West Africa, East Africa. If not East Africa, South Africa. But the majority of us did come out of West Africa, and we know that. We know that. Okay? Um, I, I'm getting winded. I don't want to go too long. But um, yesterday, the guy would have been 26 years old. Well, on May 8th, he would have been 26 years old. Gunned down in the street, jogging. And then they put the lie. You know what they do? They kill you, and then they try to make a backstory. Well, you know, he was an unsavory type of individual. Well, he did this. Well, we found this. And they're saying that he was trying to break into homes, that there was uh, burglaries happening around that area. And the people around the area said, no, there were no burglaries. No, no one's breaking around here. So that lie fell through the hole. They went on social media, and white supremacists, white inferiorists, sorry, white inferiors signed on. They had a few thousand people signing, supporting the killers. They actually came out to support the killers. So that lets you know the mentality of these people out there. I saw something that's very disturbing on the internet. And it said, stop racism, shoot back. Is that where we want it to go? Do we want it to get to that point? Stop racism. Shoot back. Now, I'm not advocating that. I'm just showing you what somebody posted. This is somebody's mind, their thought process. And this is what it's escalating to. This is what it's escalating to. This whole problem is being exasperated by the complacency of the whites and other people who just sit back and allow this to happen. It's time for it to stop, you guys. It's time for it to stop, okay? I'm not going to take mo any more of your time. I was going to do it outside, but the wind was blowing and stuff, so I didn't want it to blow into the microphone. And, um, <laughs> you know, you know I, I, I'm trying not get, to get too emotionally um, involved in this thing, but you guys, come on, please. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. For the sake of our, my grandsons, for the sake of your sons, your brothers, your, 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 your fathers, your uncles, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Hashtag, I run with Mott. Put your jogging picture on and let's put it online all over the world, whatever country you're in, wherever you are, especially our black people. I want you there. We, white people, you're welcome. Asians, Latin, everybody's welcome. Let's do this. Let's flood the internet. Hashtag, I run with Mott. Standing on your left leg, 
signifying that we will not allow these people to be left who were, who were shot and killed. And we keep our right leg in the ground because we don't come down with our right foot until we get this right. Okay? Let's do this, you guys. Please, let's do this, okay? We'll be looking out for it. And uh, I'd like to just say to everybody, spread the love because only love is going to conquer this, okay? Only love is going to bring us together. We need to be brought together as a black community, and then we all need to be brought together as a world global community, okay? Make love great again. Make love great again. Thank you very much. I run with Maude.